So in this video tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to create a backdrop image or a background image using Photoshop for an advertisement layout. So right here I've got an image that I took of my son. Uh, we're going to make a mock layout or a, a fictional layout uh, for a headphones ad. So this is the start image. Uh, you can see right here this is kind of the effect we're going for. So through this video we'll uh, manipulate the photo, we'll do some adjustments, uh, we'll do some correction, we'll also uh, e extend the size, talk about resolution, and do some masking as well as colorization. So we'll use our layers palette, uh, quite a few different things and tools that you would use in Photoshop to make this layout. So one of the first things I wanted to start off with is I want to come in and touch up some of his uh, hair so we can use the the healing brush come in here and uh, just touch up there's some little spots in here if we wanted to take a mole off we can okay. so do all your touch up first um, there's some basic things that we're doing there but for the rest of this we'll we'll want to basically edit this okay. so we've got our touch up the way we want but we want to flip this image okay. really want him to be looking at the right add the text to the other side so in order to do that you can go to image image rotation and we can flip this canvas horizontally okay now I've got him looking the other direction okay one of the other things that we work on in uh, talking about ad layout uh, we're gonna assume this is for print and if it was print we would set it for a certain resolution uh, in this case we're gonna go to image and image size in Photoshop CC you've got a resample image okay we want to uncheck that and print resolution is actually 300 so we'll actually increase our size here so definitely don't want to resample uh, the rule is that you can make it smaller but definitely don't want to make it bigger because it gets pixelated or low quality okay. so that gives a, a dimension about 12.16 by 9.12 for this particular image um, and once we've got that set we can click OK so that gives us the resolution or fixes the resolution to a print resolution recommended resolution is 300 dpi uh, I want this to be a little bit bigger so we're gonna add some canvas size to that now that we've got the resolution correct uh, we want to add image and canvas size we want to go here and adjust this so I want to change this to 16. Now I can do an even 16 or in this case I'm going to leave it 16.16 16. uh, and I want to add that to the right hand side. I want to add a space over here in the right to give us uh, an area to place text and and to show off a logo and so on and so forth. So I'm going to click OK. Now in this case it gave it to us as black. I'm going to undo that. Hit D and as I did, you should have seen my foreground and background color switch. Okay, so uh, to undo is uh, right there. We could go back and forth. Okay, uh, in this case, we're going to go to image, canvas size again, do the same thing, but this time it should come out as white. And that's the difference of your foreground color and your background color. Okay. So that's just adding that space. I'm going to go ahead and hit Command minus if you're on a Windows machine, that's Control minus to add more depth in there. Okay. Now I added it white on purpose. Even though I'm going to color this black, I want it to be able to see the difference here. It might get lost because this is a darker picture. So we could have stuck with black, but uh, white, I kind of want to see where I'm at. Uh, and then I can come in and make a new layer. So the white and black is a little bit of a preference because I am going to make a gradient over here. So I made a new layer over the top of this okay, just by hitting the new layer button and I want to use my gradient tool and in the options I'm going to pick this one right here which is black to transparent should be foreground to transparent and the black is the foreground so if we were to swap that that would change the color. Okay now the way that the gradient works and as I do this, I'm going to hold the shift key, which will draw it in a straight line. If I drag the gradient right there, okay, you'll see that there's a halo there. Because I started on the right side of that line, 
it's not going to cover that up very well. So I'm going to hit Command-Z once again if you're on Windows, that would be Control-Z. And I'm going to start my gradient here, okay, on the left of that line break or color break. Now if I go into his face, that's going to start affecting the face there. So we're going to stop a little bit before there. Once you learn mass, you can control that. And you can undo it, do it several times. I'm holding the shift key to get a straight drag, just to get it to the way you like. Okay. And once again, I've done that on a separate layer. Okay. So I'm not destroying the layer underneath. Uh, I'm building on top of that. Okay. So when we build our layout, we'll build this in a, a Photoshop format with all the layers. When we get ready to send it to InDesign or finish that layout, we may flatten it uh, or before we send it to press because we can certainly do the whole layout in Photoshop. But the intention is that we'll do the background in Photoshop and come back and rebuild this in InDesign. Okay. So with that started, we've got that section ready. Okay. Another thing is that maybe I want to unify this color. Okay. In this layout, we've picked a purple cast to that. So you can see that kind of purple cast to that particular layout. Um, with that there, and, or in order to get that, we will need to use what we call an adjustment layer. Now there's multiple ways to do it uh, with all the Adobe products, but I particularly like the adjustment layer. So we're going to make a new adjustment layer, and we're going to pick Hue and Saturation. So in this hue and saturation layer, we're also going to pick colorize. Okay. And then we can colorize or pick a certain cast that we like, the amount of saturation, okay, how intense that color is. Okay. And the photo, the original photo has kind of a, a gold cast to it. So I'm going to try and get more of a violet color so it will be more of a complementary color layout. So I can play with the saturation there. And when I get it okay, I can just click so. So the nice thing about the adjustment layer is that I can come back and change it. Say I want to change that adjustment, I just double click on it. And so if I decided I wanted it to be green or a different color, I can change that later on. Okay? That's the nice thing about layers. So if you do flatten it, I, I do recommend that you pick and save it as a different file so that you keep your original Photoshop file intact and your layers intact. Okay. So that's the quick adjustment. We've got the basic colorization and we could do several different colors. Um, if we wanted to, we could even duplicate this. So just dragging that layer down to the new icon in the layers palette will show that. If you don't have layers, I should mention this. Window, and if it will stay there, you get an option for layers down there at the bottom. F7 should be it. And that's how you would bring it up. So on this layer, we're going to turn off this one here. Come back and change that color. Maybe we want this one to be green. Give it a green cast. Okay. So now we've got two adjustment layers and the original. Okay. Um, actually, I'm going to throw that away because I didn't build the mask yet. So we want to come in and mask out these headphones so we could see them showing up. Now, the way that that works is with paths. So you see the path palette there and we actually use the pen tool. Okay. Uh, there's many ways that you can do that, but this is the best way. So I'm going to zoom in, Command Plus or Control Plus if you're on a PC. I'm going to start up here with the pen tool. Now a nice trick about the pen tool, if you hold down the caps lock, you'll get a precise cursor versus the pen. It makes it a little bit easier to follow your line to be able to draw where that goes. Now a quick toggle is the spacebar, you'll see that come up. Um, just holding that spacebar will bring up the hand tool, so if I need to move it. But still allows me to stay in the, the pen tool options. So you can see right here, uh, just getting some pen anchors around these headphones. 
Let's see if we can do this, how well I can do this today. Okay. One nice thing about the pen tool is we can set that back curve here and hold the Alt key or Option key and readjust the handlebars on the other side. So that's how I'm getting that anchor uh, point to bend. Uh, one thing I found about the pen tool is if you mess up, uh, better to go and use the command Z or control Z and undo it and continue on. So you may have to do some control Z, that's fine. Um, that actually works a little bit better if you undo it and then trying to fix it or continue on sometimes. So just doing a quick path around here. Okay, The way that this is working is this is saving it as a a work path. If you look over on the right, you'll see that the path palette has what we call a work path. So, currently working on this path. So, we'll get it to a point where it needs to be. Okay, and then when you want to close that path off, you'll see you'll come over to that cursor and you'll get uh, a pen tool with the circle around it. That means that you're closing that path off. Okay. If you needed to come back in and adjust those, we can use this arrow tool right here. Uh, that will allow us to edit these anchor points. Getting a little bit of lag as I record this video. But you should be able to readjust those if you need to make some slight adjustments. Uh, one thing to note about it, it's better to err on the inside of an object so it won't be exactly perfect but you get the idea. Get as close as we can. Okay. And when you feel really good about that path we can go ahead and save it as path 1. Okay, now that's really important. If you don't do that, it's a work path. If you deselect it and start redrawing over it, you're gonna have problems, you're gonna have a bad day. So make sure that you drag that down to the new icon to finish that path off, okay? We can always come back and work on it, but that takes it uh, from a work path and keeps it from being erased. So at that point, we have a lot of options with that path. If we wanted to, we can load that path. We can load it as a selection, okay? And what that lets us do here is we've got a, a mask area for this hue and saturation point right here. So the way that the mask works in, in Photoshop is that you have a white area, which will reveal, and if it were black, it would conceal it. So white reveals, black conceals. So knowing that, if we select that area, we go to Edit, and fill it with the color. In this case we want to use black, the background color. So let me move the dialog box on screen here. So instead of content aware, we'll go black 100% and we'll fill that area with black. And what that does is if you look over here, that conceals that area. Okay. So I can go up to select, maybe if it'll let me, uh, and deselect that. Control D will be your shortcut or Command D if you're on a Mac. Uh, we'll zoom out so you can see that whole lab. Okay, so there's the background image. All we need to do is add our text in here. Now we could do this whole layout in Photoshop, uh, add some text in, add a logo or an icon, do a few other things, but that's the basics. Okay. Um, one thing you want to do and I probably should have saved sooner than now, but is save this file. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit save as so we get an option here. So there's the name of it. We're going to end up doing a fictional ad. We'll call it the Jams ad. So we'll call this Jams Background. Nope, still got the caps on. That's okay for now. 
Uh, and you can see that I've already made a folder, uh, made a couple different colors in there. Uh, but we'll call this Jams Background and we'll keep it as a Photoshop file. This will allow us to change it later on, do all the different things that we could. You may get a format here. We'll maximize the capability there. Uh, and now that we've got this, we may want to save one out for print. Okay. Uh, and the way that that works is you want to flatten it. So maybe before that, we'll do a couple other colors. Let's drag this down. Uh, and now that we have that mask in there, we can just copy that. So uh, if we wanted to, we could make this a green. Okay. And you notice that mask stays in place. So with this one, uh, and maybe we don't want, let's uh, delete the layer mask. And there's no layer mask there. Okay. So I could duplicate that and bring that back later. But we want a solid green one here. Okay, and maybe we even want, I don't know, green will work. We'll just keep a solid green one there. Um, and let's save that Photoshop file. So we'll just hit save this time because it's already got a, a Photoshop. So when we save it for print or to move into InDesign, I prefer to flatten my image usually works better especially if you've got a lot going on in InDesign and we'll save it as a TIFF format that's typically what you would want to use for printing now be aware your TIFF files are going to be quite a bit bigger uh, than a normal JPEG so not something that emails well uh, but it's a better quality and something you'd work with um, one thing here this is RGB so I'm gonna hit cancel I forgot to go back and change my colors so image mode CMYK and I typically like to do that one of the last things uh, keep it an RGB to work with if that's what it comes in uh, whatever the original format of the file is I like to work in that original color format uh, until I get ready for print uh, CMYK is the color for print so before we lay it out it, it needs to be changed so we'll save that one more time uh, let's try the shortcut since it's lagging out here so we'll save this one instead of jams back we'll call this one jams back green if it'll let us okay and instead of Photoshop we're going to use that TIFF file format a uh, good file organiza organization is uh, the same as web keep your files organized per job uh, that's a good way to handle it okay so there's the green one when you save a TIFF box you'll get some other options here I typically use the LZW compression and IBM PC that's going to be your best format so you'll click OK put that there All right. So that's the first one. Uh, we'll go back and undo it. Go back to the Photoshop file. And we'll save the second one with the mask here. Uh, we'll flatten this and save this image. Get rid of the hidden layer. Uh, we've already saved the Photoshop file, so should be okay to save over this one we're gonna save so we change the color mode and we're gonna save this file and we'll call this one violets and put it right in that file so the second video, once again, LZW, IBM PC, um, even though I'm on a Mac, the PC is better, that will be red. If you don't do that, it may not open on the Windows machines. So that's the setup. The next one will go over how to lay that out in InDesign, finish that ad, ad out, put type on it, uh, and possibly a logo.